Hi, everyone. I'm Leah, and I am not going to talk at all about cities, <laughs> although I do like cities. Um, as Merle said, I'm going to talk about what it's like to navigate an open source community for the first time, what to do when you're going somewhere you've never been before, when you are in uncharted territory. All right, we're going to move a little. You don't have to stand up, but I do want to see some hands. How many of you have been involved with the Apache community for more than 10 years? Raise your hand. Sweet, you can put them down. All right, more than five. Cool, more than one. How about less than one? Sweet, me too. I'm glad to see such variety in the room. Make sure you noticed who said what hands, talk to them, learn some stuff. So, hi, I'm Leah. Um, I am new to open source into the Apache community. And with the Apache community in general, I work with Airflow. Um, the reason why I am involved with Airflow is because I work at Google, I work in developer relations, and I specifically work on Google Cloud Composer, which is hosted, managed Apache Airflow. I only started at Google in November of 2018, and at that time, I was just a casual consumer of open source. When I was at GE, everything that I built was proprietary, um, so I didn't have any experience contributing. Um, as for the Apache Software Foundation, I was pretty sure I'd heard of it. And at that point, the only thing I knew about Airflow is that it meant wind. Um, but my new employer turned out it's the total opposite. They are a consumer, producer, contributor to open source. Uh, they love the Apache Software Foundation. Uh, and some Apache projects like Airflow are really crucial to their cloud product offerings, mainly Cloud Composer. Um, but there are some other Apache products that are special to Google, too. You should talk to me or my colleagues about them. So when I first started, I had to figure out what was going on. I had no idea. Everything was an unknown unknown. I had no idea what I didn't know. So I asked my manager how I should figure that out, how I should turn my unknown unknowns into at least known unknowns. This very wise manager suggested that I do a community assessment Along with some of my colleagues, I defined what exactly a community assessment meant to me. So I knew at least that I was going to have to be a detective. Um, there's an American series of books, Nancy Drew, that I loved when I was a kid. And I was like, cool, I'm going to get to be Nancy Drew. She's a detective. Um, and as a detective, I was going to look at five things about a community. I was going to take a look at its taxonomy, the breakdown of the people within it. Uh, I was going to look at how a project was used. I was going to look at the issues a project might have, how one contributes to that project, and what its releases look like. And then, I know I said it was five things, but there's six bullets. The sixth thing that I would do is to look at those five things for similar tools and products, or uh, projects. Don't worry, we're going to go through each of these one by one and talk about what it means. So community taxonomy. The most important thing about a project, as you've probably heard a lot during this conference, is not the code itself. It's the people. So you should figure out the structure of what that project looks like. Now, in Apache projects, that's pretty easy because we have the whole PMC committers, contributors. But if you were to apply this to a non-Apache project, it might look a little bit different. Given that we have that structure with the PMC and the committers, who are they? Um, where are they based around the world? Sometimes it's nice to know if you're going to need to wait overnight for your PRs to be merged or not. Um, how many committers are there? How busy are they? Uh, if there aren't a lot of committers and it seems like a project is growing, this could be an opportunity for you to build up your contributions and maybe become a committer yourself. Um, what companies are involved? I know uh, in the Apache world, we don't really care who anyone works for, but sometimes it's interesting if you know someone from a particular industry uh, is well-versed in a particular set of technology that you're interested in using, you might be able to learn from their expertise. It's less from a political standpoint. Um, and also to know what companies are involved in the project. Is there someone like a Google who is using Airflow as a cloud composer? And like any good superhero, it's kind of fun to learn the origin story. Where did it come from? So for Airflow, again, I'm going to keep referring to Airflow because that's what I know the best. It came from Airbnb and then ended up in the incubator and became a top-level project last year. 
the places that you can look to find all of this information. You can look at a project's wiki, you can look at its readme, you can look at its docs, you can read the email archives, and you should start lurking on the dev list even if you have no idea what's going on. All right, so you know who is involved but, uh, in, when it comes to like building the project, but what about who's using it? It's good to figure out if the users are individuals or if they're enterprise users or if they are some of each. And like how many users are there? Is it a ton? Is it not very many? Is it growing rapidly? And is this a dependency of something bigger? It's one thing to have like 10 users or yeah, 10 users, but to have those 10 users each have like 4 billion users. That's a pretty different story than just 10 random people using your thing. You can look at things like libraries IO. If it's a Python-based project, you can look at PyPy. Py, Py. You can use BigQuery. Uh, and if you were to go on PyPy, you would see this statistics thing. You can click on that Google BigQuery thing, and it will give you the query to copy and paste. You don't have to be able to write the query at all. And that will break down usage by version, which is really cool. As of a few months ago, uh, GitHub also added this really nice used by tab. And you can click on that and drill down to see what exactly those 508 used bys are. Uh, these are the statistics for Airflow, but I think it's as of Monday, so they may have gone up a little bit. At least I hope they went up and not down. OK, we know about this community taxonomy. We know that there are hypothetically people using this project you want to get into. Inherently, if people are using something, there are going to be issues. I know we all want to think our projects are perfect, but that's actually no fun, because then there would be nothing else to work on. You should take a look at the number of open issues. Is it very many? Is it very few? You should take a look at when they were last resolved. Um, are you going to be sitting waiting forever in a day if you were to open up an issue? Um, were there a ton opened yesterday that have to do with something you know a lot about? These are all ways where you could get involved. Uh, how long does it take for an issue to be resolved? Again, is it like two hours, two days, two weeks, two months, two years? It helps gauge your expectations and how much potential heartache you could have to finding out that a project really isn't that active. How easy is it for you to submit an issue as a user? If you're starting to figure out this project and you find something wrong and you want to submit an issue, is it immediately obvious how to do that? And how easy is it for someone new to the project to fix an issue? Is there a tag on JIRA or on GitHub if it's not an Apache project that says, like, good first issue or good for newbies? Obviously, in the ASF, we're looking at JIRA, and there's all kinds of ways that you can filter issues. This was some Airflow issues ordered by priority. Um, you can also use JIRA to look at dashboards. You can look at things like how long it's taken issues to be resolved in the past 300 days. This graph is a few months old, so I think it's gotten a little bit better. Um, and you could also be someone who creates dashboards for a project. Aisha Mal, who's a committer in Airflow, made these beautiful dashboards in JIRA. So this shows the uh, created versus resolved time for Airflow issues. And I think anyone can see this dashboard. You may have to ask her for the link, or you can send me a message, and I'll point you to it. Um, so even if, if like, it's not immediately obvious how you can jump in, if you're able to give some statistics about issues to a project, pretty great place to start. All right, we know about the people, we know about the usage, we know about the issues. How, how are you going to contribute? I've been kind of alluding to it, but some projects, like they might even spell out exactly how you can do it. So it's good to take a look at who contributes, as we said, the um, taxonomy, but also taking a look at is it more individuals or is it company driven? Um, how do you get started contributing? Is this immediately obvious from whatever Googling you did to end up at that project? How often are PRs merged? Just like how often it takes for issues to be merged, the, for, the, the rate at which PRs are merged can also like, affect your expectations and affect your momentum as a potential contributor. Whose PRs get merged? Is it really a good supportive community where you're seeing a lot of variety, or is it like the same two people because it's not actually an Apache project, it's just someone's random hobby with their best friend like in their basement? Who knows? Um, and the way that you can look at that 
GitHub, you have the contributors, and this is the ones for Airflow as of this week. These were the top four that are listed, and it, it changes. You can see their GitHub handles. You can take a look, really drill down, see where they're from if you want, and you can sort that on various uh, statistics. You can take a look at the wiki to see if committers, contributors um, are listed, and if there's instructions for how to commit. Uh, and hopefully, hopefully, they have a contributing MD or a contributing RST that spells out, okay, step one, you can tell us what our bugs are. Step two, you can help us fix docs, error messages, all the way down to what you need to do to make a code contribution if that's your jam. All right. So if you're able to contribute code, or if anyone is able to contribute code, or anything, that means that this project is probably going through releases. And releases can tell you a lot about how a community organizes. So the first thing to look at is how often these releases are happening. Is it like once a year? Is it once every six months? Is it once a month, once a week? Just trying to figure out how quickly or not quickly this community works. There isn't any way that's better or worse. It will just tell you how this group of people works together. Are they following the Apache way? If it's an Apache project, you would hope so. Um, are non-binding opinions listened to? I, when a release happens in the dev list, there's an email that goes out that says, we're looking for votes on this release. But people can also express opinions even if they don't have voting power. So how are they treated? Are they listened to? Are they respectful, the ones who are actually expressing non-binding opinions? This can tell you a lot about the people within the project. Um, are they following semantic versioning in their releasing? You can, again, read that dev list. And if it's a Python project, you can take a look at the release history. That's one way you can see the velocity of it. You can even see that there's a release candidate for Airflow from less than a week ago. So now that you have all this information, you know about all these people involved. You know about people using this project. You know what happens when things go wrong. You know how to contribute. You're like basically a professional at this point, And you know the releases. If you want to really actually give those random numbers you've collected some meaning, you should take a look at some similar tools and projects or products. You should take a look at if what you're exploring versus this similar tool, if they are both community driven or if they're both company driven. For example, Airflow is a community driven project, but if you look at something like TensorFlow, that's definitely more company driven by Google, where they do accept outside contributions, but it's not at as frequent of a rate as one of like the Apache projects. How old are these projects? Is one of them like, six months old and the other five years old? That could explain for some differences. What's the tooling used Is it to produce it? Is it the same or different? Is one of them on GitHub and one of them is on something else that's harder for new people to use? Are they using some CI CD tool that makes releases amazingly easy to do or are they not? Can explain differences. So for this, I looked at Luigi, which is a workflow tool that's from Spotify. So again, comparing those same used by watches, stars, and forks on GitHub, it has more used bys than Airflow, but it has fewer stars and forks. Um, because it's from Spotify, which is a company, we know that this is company driven. They definitely do not accept very many PRs from the outside world. They have their issues on GitHub and not in JIRA. And we can see that they have 42 open issues. I can tell you that for Airflow, there is well over 1,000. But there could be a lot of reasons for this. So I know Spotify as a company. They probably have someone who's going through and checking this and maybe is doing more grooming and fixing of those issues. Or for all we know, please tell me if someone works at Spotify here, they might have an internal bug component where they're tracking things too. We see that they have 20 open PRs. Uh, we do have more open PRs in Airflow. I know that uh, Spotify is a pretty aggressive, stale PR bot. But again, they have people who are working on this full time. It is a company-driven project. I know Airflow has a PR bot. Uh, its health has gone up and down. But it's still there. And people are working hard to reduce that number. 
So what should you do if you do this? You've like tried to figure out what's going on, and you presumably have figured out what's going on. So you should save that info so that you can refer to it when you go back to looking at this in two weeks the next time you remember it so that it's not just information lost. You should consider making this information as a contribution. But if you do, you should do so kindly and only if appropriate. If you're not quite sure how to do that, I would recommend sending an email to the dev list. You can tell them exactly what you found. You can say, hi, I'm Leah. I found all of this info about Airflow, and I'm interested uh, to see if this is useful for you. What's the best way for me to share it? And people in the community will help guide you. Or they might tell you, actually, we have all this info collected somewhere. Uh, here's a dashboard. And then maybe your contribution is making that dashboard easier to find for someone else who might try to collect that info. And then you should do it again, maybe in a month, maybe in six months, maybe in a year. These numbers didn't mean too much until we compared them to a similar product or tool, but these numbers are even more meaningful if you compare a project against itself. The first time I gave this talk was in May, and uh, Airflow's like, used by Forks watches were less than Spotify's Luigi by a lot. And as of now, most of those numbers have surpassed them in the past few months. So that's a compelling story and tells you that the usage is growing. So the TLDR, which if you're not familiar with that acronym, means too long, didn't read. This is the short version. Take your time when you're trying to figure out what's going on in an open source community. It's OK to not know what's going on. Do your homework, though, to try to figure out what's going on. And don't be afraid to ask questions. And give what you can. It doesn't have to be a code contribution. It can be any kind of project management. It could be fixing docs, error messages. And just be patient with yourself and try to have fun. Thank you for having me. And enjoy your coffee break. If you want to find me around, I'm probably the one that has yarn. And I'm happy to talk about this more. Send me messages. Thank you.